Hi everyone, this is my 48th attempt to record this, so please bear with me. My name is Reden Regine and I'm coming to you from the southwestern part of Norway. This is the Knitter's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, a little podcast where I would like to talk to you about all my knitting, my knitting projects, wools, yarns and all that lovely stuff. Today it's still winter outside and I was just about to tell you that the snow is almost gone but now it has actually started again. I am not one of those Norwegians that are born with skis on. I leave that to anyone else. But, so I can't wait for spring to come. Uh, today I am drinking a cup of no, no, completely ordinary green tea, but with a slight twist of honey inside. Inside? <laughs> In it. Uh, the honey is actually from my own honeybees. I do keep some hives outside my house, a little further <laughs> uphill, uh, but I will talk about the, them another time as they are right now in hibernation. Um, today I am wearing my Zweig sweater made by me, by myself actually, but designed by Caitlin Hunter from Boylan Networks. Uh, it is knitted in Vignette Garn, which I bought at Stavanger Stricke Festival earlier this fall, in the colorways of dark rose gold, and the lace part is in Jorsmon, uh, which can be translated, I guess, to soil, earth, or something like that. It was a true joy to knit, it flew off the needles, and that surprised me quite a bit, as it does. Uh, have a quite intricate lace pattern and uh, braided stars all over the place, but that it wasn't actually a problem. The lace, um, the lace part is uh, thoroughly described, and uh, the instructions are easy to follow. I started off making these stars with a cable needle, but I just left it. I found a technique where I just uh, twist or shuffle the stitches a little bit and it worked out perfectly fine. So today is my day off. I got the fireplace running and this is perfect. Uh, it's a, it offers the perfect amount of warmth right now. Uh, yesterday was a bit colder so I would just like to show you a shawl I made earlier this summer um, because I really love it so much. It is the Hoarfrost by Andrea Maury. It is knitted in uh, some stash yarn I had kept for many, many, many years. I, I, I don't know what it, uh, what it was originally planned to be. But it turned out to become this beautiful shawl uh, called Hoarfrost. It is simple to follow. Uh, her instructions are, as always, uh, easy to follow and you start off in a corner and it, by increases you get finally this large piece of shawl. It is the softest thing and you can see just a tiny bit that annoys me that is <laughs> of course now I can't find it but I basically can't unsee it. If you see here uh, the strand of yarn is uh, quite uneven spun in some places. So it looks like I have a really bulky weight yarn in this area here. But I will just leave it like this. Uh, it took me about a week and a half to make and it was such a, such a joy to make. Uh, I am not a professional shawl wearer. I usually wear scarves and or really small narrow cows or anything like that. I feel my head just disappears <laughs> when I wrap it all around but I have found some uses for it. Uh, to make the pattern show a bit I like to keep this in front 
and uh, we'll, I will not style it for you right now, but uh, I get it to work with my trench coat or anything like that. If I'm out in the real cold, uh, earlier this winter it was like 15 um, minus uh, cold degrees, uh, it was dreadful outside. Uh, then uh, the perfect use for this was actually to just keep it like an old-fashioned shawl back here and my warm, uh, my back was completely covered and it offered so much warmth and I really appreciated that. So I highly recommend this pattern. It's a joy to knit and it, it's this lovely pattern all over the place. So it's a really structured look to it. So by finished objects. This week I don't have too many. I have one, but I think I have some things to show you still. Uh, I have completed a pair of socks. These are the Rhylite socks by Tin Can Knits. It is knitted in enchanted forest fibers. I think she's, as I told you in, an, in another chapter, that she's an American living in Norway. It's an indie dyer and she makes beautiful colors. This, uh, this is a sock set called Jack Horner and Public Pie, I think. And uh, surprisingly enough, I thought I would uh, use all of it, but this is what I have left of this. It's, it's, uh, it's only about 50 grams used for both of them. That surprised me. Uh, I knitted the adult size, the small adult size, so I cast on 60 stitches on 2.5 mill millimeter needles uh, and I made a foot longer. It's a beautiful pattern, completely, uh, completely easy to follow pattern. Uh, it's basically stockinette and some garter stitch over here. It makes a beautiful pair of socks and I can't wait to wear them. Uh, that was all I had of finished objects this, uh, this time, but I do have some uh, works in progress. Uh, I told you last time about this Herbie War by Stephen West. It's made by uh, a yarn from Stulenstrik. Um, I think it was yeah, 75% wool and 25% uh, polyamide. It is a superwash and 425 meters per 100 grams, so it's fingering. It's in the colorway Busenknopf, like a tiny rosebud. And it creates this beautiful fabric with twisted stitches, it's upside down, where I start out in the middle and I make this pattern just by increasing. And, and the pattern repeats itself later on in both of the ends. Lovely pattern to follow, it's easy uh, and it but it is a rather old pattern, I guess, by Stephen West. Um, I can't do <laughs> all the other crazy color combinations and so on that he uses, but I have deep respect for his talent. So I had to try something else by him. So I can't wait uh, to wear this. Uh, this will not be a huge shawl like the Andrew and Maori one, but uh, a rather one skein. Uh, shawl, which is more suitable for my needs, I guess. Other whips and works in progress. I wanted to cast on something rather easy, uh, without any any lace, without color work, without structure, without anything basically. Uh, and I decided to go with Petite Net's Louvre sweater. I have have been eyeing this for quite a while, but there always seems to be some so many other things to knit. So it has taken a while for, for me to cast on. But once I started, it just flies off the needles. I basically made this in two, two, three days. So 
So that means I, <laughs> I haven't given much love to anything else that I'm working on right now. It is, uh, I'm knitting this in Per Gint by Sanneskam in the black colorway, colorway obviously. Uh, the, it is 100% 100 untreated wool and it's 91 meters per 50 grams. So I need, for my size, I'm making this size small, the second size, and I, for now I bought 12 skeins of it. So we'll see. I, when I was at Stavanger Strike Festival, there was one of the stands who were selling um, stitch markers and progress markers. And I found this one based by, I guess, Harry Potter. Uh, I had a discussion with my daughter, or daughter about what this is, and we have decided it has to be a hippie work. Because it looks like it has feathers and not scales, so it's not completely a dragon, but a hippogriff nonetheless. Uh, it's fastened actually with two hooks, which is good because it is rather heavy, so one would do some damage to the stitches, I guess. Uh, for my beginning, beginning of round marker, I am keeping this Game of Thrones by <laughs> based uh, marker. It says Mother of Dragons. Sometimes it feels like that, considering my children are now almost 10 and 12 and a half years old. They call me Dragon Mother as well, so it's really very fitting. Um, I really enjoy knitting this. I have knitted uh, quite a few other petite knit patterns and uh, most of the time uh, I get gauge or this, uh, the uh, the sizing seems uh, really ac accurate. So I didn't gauge for this, but uh, uh, I just checked it the other day and it, I'm completely at gauge, which is rather unusual. But I can't wait to wear this. I would like to style it with some high heels and a pair of jeans or anything, <laughs> something like that. We'll have to see. So this is getting quite a lot of love. Uh, I'm now at the highway where I just where it's just stuck in a stitch and I wondered if I would just make the sleeves uh, when I finish this skein uh, because then I'm done with them uh, I'm one of those who just uh, I can find myself just completely stop need a break or anything like that when uh, um, when I am at the sleeve island because it's so boring but Maybe if I complete the sleeves first, then maybe I would just continue afterwards with the body and then cast off and I, I'm done. So this is it. My poor, poor Dogwood Blossom sweater by Karen Dimla Lawrence hasn't gotten any love at all since the last chapter. This is a beautiful Fair Isle cardigan and I of course, I would love to have the finished garment. And I just don't seem to, <laughs> to prioritize it. Uh, there are so many other things to knit and this will, of course, take me some time. So it fills me with guilt. But one day, one day, we'll get there. I work as a midwife at the local hospital and if, since I do not ever know what will happen when I come to work, I, I do enjoy to just keep a tiny little project with me in my bag because I don't know if I would, would help deliver a baby or if I'm able to actually knit something. So uh, today is my day off but tomorrow when I go to work just to prepare, I just cast it on something really easy. I think it will be easy because everyone else is doing it. But I have just now found my love for socks. So I have tried for first time ever to go rogue and knit a complete vanilla sock without a pattern. 
it shouldn't be too hard but i haven't done it before so i don't know that uh it is also it's the same <laughs> yarn that i use for the swag but i do a one and a half skein uh, left over from the swag so i just needed something to try to cast on uh this also i i, I make i cast on 60 stitches uh, in and 2.5 millimeter needles. I was at the local yarn store the other day and I found this. I don't know if you can, are able to see, but this tiny little knitting needle uh, by Sun is gone, where the one side is a little bit longer and the other side. I hate knitting like this with my, with my little fingers. I prefer to use more of my hand just to prevent tendonitis and so on. So for uh, earlier I've just been using double pointed needles. I tried magic loop but <sighs> ah, it's not for me. Not all, but, uh, not everything. But of course not all the time magic loop is horrible but on socks I it's too fiddly. I might just just as well I use double pointed needles because I got a rhythm to it. So I will bring this to work tomorrow. So we'll see, maybe a baby, maybe some knitting, I don't know. I do have a couple of acquisitions. I'm not quite sure what to make of any of them, but I don't have a stash. So this is actually a part of me just building some stash. Earlier, I just bought what I needed for, for the project, but I've gotten a bit more as the time has gone by. Uh, I do have this um, lovely book by Elaine, The 52 Weeks of Socks, and I've, I haven't tried any one of them just yet. They seem rather intimidating as I'm just now learning to knit socks. So I bought this beautiful yarn from a Norwegian uh, yarn shop. Uh, it's called Gondiken Fortuna, or the yarn store Fortuna, or something like that. It is a sock yarn in some colors that are completely out of my comfort zone. At least the uh, copper orange tones. But the, if you can see, there's a kind of purple tones to it, dark gray and so on. And they look lovely. It is sock yarn made by 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. It's fingering weight yarn and it is in the colorway of Grutsetter Smeltehytte. <laughs> I highly recommend their web shop. Uh, I don't know if they send overseas or anything like that, but it doesn't hurt to have a look. Uh, I can't wait to wind this up into a ball and maybe try some of the patterns in here. I do have my eyes on a pattern by Heidi Alanda. It is called the I will not pronounce it, number 16. And it is a lovely pair of socks with a lot of stockinette stitch and some lace. And since I can do stockinette and I know how to do some lace, I should be able to do this, don't you think? And I would really like to try at least, but maybe not for work, that's too difficult. Uh, other than that, I have a heard some so much about Holst Supersoft, the Danish brand with 100% uh, uh, woolen yarn. Uh, and I am inspired by knitting traditions and Crea Bea podcasts and everyone is knitting something out of cones. And I thought that was a wonderful idea. So I bought a couple, a couple of cones myself. Never tried the yarn before. That doesn't matter. I can get the cone. So I bought this, I got this in the mail a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's in the colorway of uh, Sapphire. Uh, it's kind of, it looks almost speckled or, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. It's a lovely uh, muted blue color. And I think it would turn out to be a beautiful sweater. Uh, many sweaters. <laughs> 
<laughs> so 500 grams. I, um, I don't know what I'm going to use with it, but this is just, it's a tiny step for me to build a stash. I was on the roll, so I got another one as well. This is the colorway of Allium, a beautiful flower, and it is inspired by, I really wanted this color because I was really inspired by Lisa Eldridge. She's a world-renowned makeup artist and I have watched some of her tutorials and videos out here on YouTube and one uh, in one tutorial she was wearing this beautiful pink sweater. There, it looks like it's hand knitted, I don't know, but it she looks lovely in it. So I took a screenshot and I and I did my very best to find a colorway that uh, looked a lot like that one. Uh, so this is it. I would really love to make a sweater in this color. Uh, so I made a swatch. And I have washed and blocked it. Oh, not, maybe not blocked, I did <laughs> stretch it out. And we'll see what it can be. I have uh, my eyes on a pattern, a really feminine pattern, uh, which is perfectly suitable for this yarn. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure about uh, the positive or negative ease, the pattern I'm thinking. I'm not mentioning the pattern because I just haven't decided. Uh, the pattern is suggesting uh, negative ease, but I don't want, I don't like them when it's too tight. So I would like to have a little bit more ease. So I haven't decided if I would try to go, go up a needle size, go down a needle size. This is the recommended needle size, and it's already a rather loose uh, fabric, and I really don't want to go up a needle size. But this swatch is. It suggests that I should go up even one or two needle sizes. Oh, I, by now, I don't really don't know what to do. So we'll just see. I will leave it, leave it to this, and uh, I just have to go thinking, think about it a little while. So this is it. Um, I don't have anything yarn related or knitting related right now. But I would just talk a little bit. <laughs> I just wanted to say, share my little love for romance movies. I um, so last night my husband was away from work, so I changed the bed sheets. I put on my PJs and brought out some snacks and a cup of tea, and I put on Pride and Prejudice, the lovely movie from 2005 with Kieran Knightley. I just love that movie and I have seen it like 35 times or something like that. Not that I'm counting, uh, but it makes me feel so happy and in love and everything is perfect. So I decided I would stay up and stay up really long just to watch the movie, get some knitting done. But I have basically collapsed in my knitting chair. <laughs> I, uh, I was exhausted. I don't know why. It has been a lot of driving for the children uh, on the children for appointments and activities. So I just uh, I just had to go to sleep. I slept very well, thank you. But it wasn't this long late stay up late night that I was hoping. <laughs> But it's okay. I got to do some knitting and uh, I watched the other, the rest of the movie while I was getting ready to to record today. I'm a hopeless romantic and I really enjoy watching that movie. I can see it uh, again and again and again. Hot recommendation if you haven't seen it before. Uh, I don't know what else to talk to you about today. I'm happy that you have uh, stayed with me so long. Do so subscribe and uh, press like if you did enjoy it. And I will come back to you in a couple of weeks, I guess. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.